gonna go and I don't know what like when it's gonna start. <laughs> What? They keep chuckling over there. Yeah, you're on. And I don't know what they're chuckling about. <laughs> because I'm streaming everything that we just said. <laughs> We're a little bit in uh, new territory here today because we have a different setup. And, um, well, that's pretty much it. We're just <laughs> so thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, what? They keep chuckling. You're <laughs> on. You need to be. <laughs> so funny and I look like I feel like I look like a pink grapefruit <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's because I'm next to the green so today um, I just want to work on this and they're laughing again ignore the chuckle okay. <laughs> no, I just, okay, they can't hear you when you're <laughs> when I'm turned around I'm going to try and get the camera audio I can talk like this. I can, I can look like this and talk like this. I could sit like this, kind of in the middle. Yeah. I thought, yeah. The problem is the cam, the microphone's up here, but the camera's over there. All right, I'll just get started and I'll just talk while I work. <laughs> And I'm resisting the temptation to start moving things while I'm sitting here. I'm going to keep it everything where it is. They hear you and you look great. <laughs> Thank you. So I have some Paisaggio Imprimatura here. And I wanted to kind of get something going on it before today, especially the darks. I put um, I put some darks in, and I often go to the deep, like the eggplanty purple, a dark teal, and I really like using black and coffee. And and then I just started to try and sort of identify some dark spots. But I will um, I'll talk as I go. For my fiber, I picked out some, um, you know, lion colors. This is Gen Gen Tan. I have bronze. I have Arabica. And I have um, Seal Brown, horse coat. The skin tones and the horse coat are going to work great because of the kind of fiber blend that they are. But I like things to be more lively than just brown, even though um, the subject is tan and brown and black, which they can see the picture. Can they see the picture or it's not there yet? Oh, uh, no, I just gave it to you. I, like, I just put it up. Okay. It's coming. Okay. So you'll see, my, you'll see my reference image, which I have licensed. Um, but I like to punch up colors with other colors so i have some of the bat of the paisaggio some of the pre-felt that i just pulled off which will be nice to kind of mix in here and there to keep everything unified and then i have some some lights um i have amber flamingo um hush or sea mist i always get them mixed up and some white and then I have some, some mid-tones. I have currant, rust, cinnamon, and nut. I have a couple of brights. I have melon and um, saffron, I believe that is. Sorry, that's hush. Hush, thank you. <laughs> and then I have those darks I was telling you about. The purple, The I think this is um, fur. I do have some black and coffee. I do like to limit my palette, whether I'm painting or doing something like this, because um, it helps, it, it will help you keep your painting unified. If you keep kind of grabbing all kinds of random colors, I mean, that could be a style, but it 
to me, it's harder to keep a unity to the whole piece. I did bring some fur up, a variety of fur colors that I could use in the main. And that's a decision about, do I want this to be totally flat and like painted, or do I want to add texture um, to the entire thing, like some some two like some three dimensionality? So I need to bring up my pictures here. Oh geez, here we go. So my reference image, I also duplicated um, just digitally and I made it black and white. I like to keep things on my laptop because when, as soon as I print it out, you know, it just becomes more dull and less alive. So the, this, the, the component of the light in the screen helps keep your image um, really lively. I chose the reference image that I chose because it has a very soft light and that's gonna allow me to interpret the light. It's even a little bit hard for me to tell where it's coming from. Um, it almost looks somewhat backlit, but it's, it's a little hard to tell because wh whatever the light source in this picture is very soft. And I liked that. So I can kind of play up different areas. You know what I did not do is give myself, um, a punch tool. <laughs> I do have some single needles here, so thank you. Yeah, and I don't know if this is going to be. Ah, uh, this one's real strong. So, if there's any other pen tools. So with a single needle, I think I'm just going to start to make an outline. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, that one's good. And I think I'll use a nice, fun color like purple. And this will help both of us, you and I, start to see where things are. <laughs> Were there any questions so far? Um, I answered. And my goal is um, today is to, all right, so I can already see in my little layout that I did for my wet felting, I can already see some mistakes that I made. My goal today is just to work for, you know, an hour and a half, two hours and see how far I get and see what that, um, what that looks like. Now there's some questions. The okay. background is the pink foam insulation, yes? Yes. So I really encourage you to draw. I really encourage you to learn to see um, learn to see this layout. It's gonna have more um, more artistry, more of your interpretation, more of you in it. So I'm just laying out some some lines that I see and then I'll double check their accuracy with um, by using proportions. <clears throat> do you draw your design first or do you wing it by looking at the picture? I'm looking at the picture and I'm a little bit of both. <laughs> I'm winging it, I'm looking at the picture and I'm drawing right now sort of some of the lines that I see so that we can start to see the lion here. And I'll show you some of the tricks that I use. So this is the top of the nose and I can tell that is definitely a horizontal line. So I can make that horizontal. I can look at the angle of the top of the snout relative to that and make sure that this, this negative space looks the same 
as the negative space in the picture. Okay, so I'm going with the side of the muzzle here and it's almost vertical, but then slight angle and then comes down around here. Tony says I don't draw what is negative space. So negative space is the space that's left between something. So if I go like this, this is the negative space. So a lot of times when you're drawing 2D and you're looking at, let's say you're drawing a horse and you have the two front legs are in, you know, a horsey position. You can draw the legs, but it's also important to look at the shape that the legs are making in between the two legs. That is going to help you draw just as much as looking at the actual legs. All good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another um, handy trick is to take some proportion, some proportionate measurements. So a really helpful one is to look at the picture and I'm going to find a distance from the center of the eye to the center of the eye. And then I'm going to see, okay, what is that the same as? Um, so it's the same as the top of the nose to the middle of the chin. So let me get my eyes on here and then I'll show you, show you what I mean. So I could draw this on with black since it is very dark and that'll help you guys see the contrast to the green a little bit more. So I'm looking at the angles of this line at the inside of the eye and it's not horizontal and it's not vertical. It's not quite 45. Um, so those are the kinds of things that are helping my brain draw this, draw this out. Hmm. We're enjoying this, but they miss seeing our faces. I know. And then someone else said, your behind is also nice. <laughs> my rear, my rear view. <laughs> we did contemplate having another camera um, on my face, but um, like what's behind me doesn't look nice. So <laughs> it was kind of. Okay, so, oh, Jesus. Vanity, yeah. All right, so center of the eye to center of the eye was the same as from the nose to the middle of the chin. So I'm doing okay there. And I'll just keep checking things like that. Um, another thing I can do is put something vertical onto my drawing, like... If I go right down the cheek, that intersects. Okay, so here's a mistake that I've made. In my reference image, if I go vertically down from the outside of this eye socket, it's actually intersecting the muzzle. And so when I do it here, I'm a, it is a little bit, but I either have this in too far or I have this out too far. So I need to... Um, I need to see that this this protrudes a little bit more than I have it. So I'm gonna do a little combo. I'm gonna scoot this out a little bit. And I'm gonna scoot this in a little bit. Somebody asked, can 
we use an iron to put the picture on the felt? There's all kinds of um, stuff available. Um, I don't know how iron-on images work onto this kind of pre-felt. Then once I have a few guidelines, I start putting in some lights and darks. Um, so I start to have an idea of my values. Mm hmm yeah you could print your picture out draw a grid on it I'm not sure how you would draw have the grid on the pre felt right. all right something looks off here to me but I'm just gonna figure it out once I get going It takes a very small amount of wool um, to do this. So I'm starting to put in some, some darks and I'll put in some lights and then that'll bring our picture a little bit more forward for us to see where we are with things. There's a little grayscale card. Um, I don't know if you, yeah, it should be in the bottom shelf in the, where the painting stuff is. Okay, in my picture, I put a really dark spot here, um, but it's not quite in the right place. So I'm gonna put dark where I see it, and then I've gotta put some light over this. My easel is bouncing around a lot. Is it okay, Audrey? Um, yeah. I think that's what might have been throwing me off. Is it the wheel or not? It's um, a oh, little yeah. card. I got it. Yeah. So in other words, I have a shadow under the eye here, and then I have some light. Thank you so much. And then I have some dark, so I'm going to start lightening this up. Like this right here. It's pretty light. I like to keep things like broad strokes and kind of loose. I'm not super detailed or super, you know, really felting firmly right now. I'm just um, getting my um, some values on there. So that I can go from there. And right now I'm only looking at my black and white picture. You're using merino to outline, yes? Not to I was using yeah. merino, yeah. So this is where I have some real dark that I kind of got in the wrong place in my wet felting. So I'll go ahead and put that in. So I really approach it the same way that I approach painting. Hey, um, do you guys, can I get in through Ask the Ice from here? Mm -mm. 
I went to Taekwondo school, and I forgot my keys at home. I don't know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we're, li- we're live. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Mine was good. Oh, my gosh. So funny. All right, these things are kind of, kind of in the right place. I think I'm going to make the eye just sort of a dark hole. Well, maybe not where I want the eyeball to be, but I'm going to get a little more dark in here so we can see where it goes. I'm sorry. I was not super friendly. I didn't know what he was saying. Can you get into the Taekwondo place through? Why didn't he knock on us, the ISIS door? <laughs> How many projects can you stab on that before it disintegrates? I have not yet gotten to the bottom of that. I think this is not in the right place. Also, you're upright, so it's not distorted, correct? I, yeah, so part of the reason we have this set up is because I wanted to work. Um, somewhat vertically because when you when you lay your 2d down flat on a table it'll be foreshortened okay so i think what i need to see is where is the side of the nostril <laughs> thanks talbot So the side of the nostril is like coming right up into this dark line in the middle of his forehead. So I knew something was askew. So his nose is wider. So that would be right there. Just you guys seeing me trying to get this image right is going to be. They're cheering on Milo. Get him. <laughs> Protecting. Three quarters is um, can be tricky. As you probably know, if you've ever tried to draw a dog or a human or um, getting the angles of the nose. So the grayscale is really helpful because like you could look at the lion's chin and think your brain is thinking that's white, you know? Um, and then that his mane is tan. So you think, well, this needs to be lighter than this. But in fact, this part of the lion's mane is in the light and this part of the lion's chin is in shadow. So the chin might actually be darker, even though the chin is white, parts of it may be darker than the mane that is in light. So I'm gonna mix, um, I'm gonna mix a color to do a little chin shadow here. Let me look at my, since I'm mixing a color, I'm gonna look at my color picture. I want it to be a little bit green because the green is reflected from the um, from the background color into the lights that are in the in your subject. Your background color can be a contrasting color to the main part of the subject, but it probably has some of the same colors in it because all color is 
um, just reflections of what's around it. Except for the frickin' striped dress. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the I way, just I, just, I just discovered that whole thing, and I'm fascinated by it. Because I took a screenshot. Let me look at it today. <laughs> I took a screenshot of what color is the dress. <laughs> what? I can't believe you're putting this on the internet in 2022. <laughs> It's hard. It is. Well, okay. Let me stop for a second because I can't get to it. I'll find it. You want me to pull it up? What year was the dress? No, I want my specific screenshot because I want to see it because when I looked at it on two different days, there it is. Okay, it's still, it's still, it's still oh black and blue today. Was it 2019? Uh, so no. I took a screenshot of the striped dress and it was gold and white. And then the next day I looked at it and it was black and blue. So that was crazy to me because here we are talking about color and seeing color and I don't even trust it anymore. All right, so this is my chin shadow color. No, the dress was 2015. All right, what? just seven years behind. Mm -hmm. It's all right. All right, so this right now is one of the lightest things on here. So it's gonna look rather light. This is why it's good to get a variety of values. This color is also under this eye. There's good, good tips on here. Jan said check your proportions by looking in a mirror or turn it. Oh, turn it definitely. Down. Definitely the mirror is like, the mirror actually is like the worst because you hold, you think you're doing okay and then you hold it up in the mirror and it's it's, it's a little too much truth sometimes <laughs> you're just like oh man just fyi i've been stifling a sneeze for about 2 minutes so hopefully i will continue to succeed Once I, once I think I have this, it's going to get really fun. I mean, I'm having fun, but I'm not sure how um, impressive this is at the moment. Trisha has that problem with her mirror in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I think, I'm, I think I'm doing okay. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no. I'm still the. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna eliminate this because I don't like it, and it's not right. And I'm just gonna let it evolve. Um, I'm gonna check other things. I'm just gonna ignore the problem. <laughs> Oh, good. Background, which is very helpful. Good. So this little corner of his mouth is lower than this. So I have that in the wrong spot. So I'm just going to move that. It's like really looking at things relative to each other is what you're 
what you're trying to do. You also do a fair amount of squinting. Yep, squinting's good. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my pendle. My pendle plopped. It's solid, solid brass. No, sorry, no. So I'm not really like mixing colors yet. I'm just still um, getting values in. Okay, so there is some, cause this side of his brow is in shadow and this side is in light. So that helps me see what's what here. I watched The Other Boleyn Girl last night. Did you read those books? I did read it. It's one of those ones that's like somewhat based on history. And then you're like, how much of that is true? Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. I think I'm starting to see the problem over here. I was sort of, his nose looks so um, pronounced to me that I think I was trying to bring it to the, to the right too much, um, but that's not the, that's not the way to go. It comes out because of this. Oh, that's better already. Does that stick into the surface at all? Like, do you ever need to worry about lifting it? I don't know, we'll check. Not too bad. I mean, I haven't, I haven't stabbed a ton yet. Okay, I'm. This is getting, getting better. I mean, you guys have a better vantage point than I do. Being out there, maybe you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Maybe you can see it. What? Somebody jumped when the pendle fell to the floor. I'm sorry, it was very loud here as well. Oh my gosh, I love like I also picked this lion, not just for the light, but because he's so handsome. <laughs> I'm going to mix um, amber and some Serafina white and just pick a few places that are nice and light. So they're marked. didn't have a, a plan on there. Look 
Can we start the bidding? I, you, you don't want to bid yet because... Somebody said you could stop now and still be worthy and abstract. Because uh, we do not know which direction this will go. All right, there's some suggestions. Okay. The nose bridge, check under the right eye. His right eye or the right eye that we see? This eye? Like so this? said the right eye. His left eye looks large. Okay. Wait. Let's, let's talk about right and left. Let's talk about this being right and this being left. Even though that's his left and his right, we're going to... I don't know what that just meant. We're going to call this left and this right. So when you give me your instructions, <laughs> God, he's so yummy. Getting teal and purple and brown into your darks gives such a more lively dark than black. Same with, you know, having color in your whites. Black is great for like, a, you know, just getting that super dark established. Um, but then... Yeah, did I drop both my pin things? I was using another one. Here, I'll use a ruler. That's less likely for me to lose it. <laughs> it's still metal. All right, this is, this is vertical, and we're gonna go to the left eye. Um, I think that's about, I think that's about 45. That, that looks right to me. Yeah, this, I know, it's, this is looking a little, okay, let's get this on here. And then I'll start mixing some more interesting colors shortly. I'm just, like I said, I want to get, get some values. Whoops, what was this doing? This was like, oh, this is just a little... Lightness. Uh, Laura just said she thinks the pers their perspective is a little off because of the picture of the camera. Oh, just oh. Bit right, you guys are looking from here and I'm looking from here. Jan Scott had a teacher that said try to use as little black as possible. Use other darts to yeah. make darks. I, I go with that. Um, I definitely go with that theory as well. One of the things that's really fun to paint is reflected light. And it gives things a lot of, a lot of dimension. So even though all this is in shadow, there's just a slight lightness over here. I'm not going to get that detailed yet, um, but I'm just excited to do it <laughs> eventually. <laughs> yeah, but so for me today, like this side of the face is what's given me a little bit of, a little bit of trouble, but I'll get it. I feel like it's starting to get there. Do you have the iridine in there yet? Eh, 
Not yeah. really. You don't really see his ears. It's like a dark spot, and then yeah. I could I could put something. There's a million ways to paint, a million ways to paint with wool. Um, I'm just showing you the way I would do it. Can I ask you a favor, Captain? Uh -huh. um, some hand carters? I, th yeah. I think they're either over there. Thank you. Uh -huh. A lot of people wondering how long the foam lasts. Oh, it'll last you long enough. You know, like it's, it's, I've, we've been using the same pieces of foam for years. I mean, I don't do this too, too often, but. <laughs> this is going to be really hard. Who picked this <laughs> project? <laughs> Um, that was a good because idea. of the transitions from from darks to lights in here. All right, let's get some ear ear happenings. Um, this side of the face, this bit right here, I'm going to. Even though this is like a chestnutty brown, I'm going to mix something that I'm really going to dull down because I want that to kind of fade away sort of into the green. And I want this area of contrast to pop more. So this, this, and this. So I'll show, um, I'll show some more specifics like that. Hopefully we still have enough time. So this is like, um, okay, so I'll just talk about a few things in composition. One is that because he's facing this way, even though he's really kind of centered on my, on my piece, this is still all lion. You want a lot of empty space in the direction that the figure is looking. Um, like you don't want it, the painting to end here. It makes them feel like, um, it makes the viewer feel subconsciously like the, the subject is trapped. Um, you want places for the eye to rest. So keeping this kind of vague, oh, this is like way, this is way out of whack and kind of wacky. So that's like a little bit too high contrast for being over on this side of the painting. Um, <laughs> so, now it's gone. so we want you know you want places for the eye to rest like down here it's just going to be darks over here it's just going to be like muted green like i just said i'm going to have this part of the main be very subtle the things that bring your eye the things that come forward the most are contrast and value complementary colors so if I really want the viewer to look right here, I'm gonna bounce some, I'm gonna have some blue and gold to get, some blue and orange together or, or, or green and brown. I'm gonna really bounce some complementary colors off of each other. 
Okay, so we have contrast and value, complementary colors, sharp edges. Everything will be brought to more detail here than here. Um, thickness, so when you're painting, and even with wool, the parts that are, are thicker and more built up are going to draw the eye. Sharp lines. Um, so where we want things to fade away, you're gonna have less contrast, less difference in complementary um, colors and um, softer edges. All right, let's see. All right, so I just feel like I'm starting to get, starting to get an idea here. And- Do you know what needles you have in there? Um, 38. And normally I would hop up and stand back. But I'm just going to keep keep on going. Boy. Paul said he's listening at work, and when he peeks over, he keeps seeing that lion like it's tattooed on your back. What? Well, the, the lion right now is the reference picture. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. This is fun. I mixed um, bronze and the Paisaggio green, and that makes a nice, rich neutral. That'll actually be really good to start bringing kind of up out of here. And there's a little bit of purple in there. And that purple mixed with this like brown is creating some dynamic. Um, same with this teal that's back here. So I like to be painterly. I don't like to get super literal. Because that's what is so fun about it. All right, so there's a little bit of reflected light over here, and I'll, I'll take that opportunity to develop this area. One second. I'm just looking for other places. So sometimes when I have a color that I really like, I just keep looking for places that it can go. Especially with oil paints. You're like, oh, I have this cool color on my... Um, cool color puddle. Where else could I put it? Absolutely. I would pull it out. You wouldn't try to cover it with another? Um, it, I guess it depends on the kind of like mistake, okay. you know. It's easy to pull out. It's, I, I am not, I can take this and, you know, felt it more. Um, all right, this is a weird light spot that I made with the wet felting. See, I'm going to get rid of it. Oh. <laughs> I could have covered it, but if you're trying to cover a really dark with a really light or vice versa, it's, it's, that's what's so nice about, that's why I picked the green because it's a mid-tone and, uh, it gives me that mid-tone automatically. So as I add darks and lights, if I worked on a really light surface, I would have to add all my mid-tones and... Sue Bingham said she has a really hard time letting go of details. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions on how to embrace being more painterly? Um, hmm. Yeah, I think, I don't, I think you don't have to let go of details. Um, 
especially towards the end. But I would say at this stage, if you can think of You know, think in terms of values. Um, think, just keep reminding yourself to work the whole piece and not um, not get bogged down in one area. Maybe that would help. But don't be afraid. If you're a detail-oriented person, um, you know, by all means, you know, develop it. Dive in and develop develop some details. But I would I. I, I know that I just have better success in a looser painting if I avoid doing that until the end, whether it's with oils or, or this medium. Laura suggested the Sue maybe stop before you think you're done. That too, yep. Oh, always, you know, taking a break is always a great idea too. Step away. Step away, yeah. I should probably step away. I see I see something that's happening here. This is what needs to be out farther. So, you know, when I was struggling with this, and I might still be, um, kind of ignoring it isn't too bad of a plan because you can, it will develop by doing like the negative space type things like like it's gonna come into a focus Okay, between the eyes, I need to find a better, I'm gonna go from outside of the eye to the outside of the eye. All right, here's a good one. The outside of the eye to the outside of the eye is the same as from the nose to here. The outside of the nose to here. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, let's do a, let's do a vertical one. The distance from the top of the nose to the inside of the eye is the same at what's that four centimeters is the same as oh okay the distance from the top of the nose to the inside of the eye is the same as the width from eye to eye so nine centimeters oh good all right so i'm like i'm in the right ballpark if something's a little bit off we'll figure it out I'm going to mix um, bronze, rust, and a little bit of green to get a richer brown in a few places that I see it. Yeah, anytime you think of it, if you can name the colors you're blending, mm -hmm. just so people understand yep. the possibilities. I'm using rust merino, um, the bronze skin tone and some of the green background. And I'm seeing this in a few little brighter spots around the head here. Rust itself is too, all right, what's going on here? This is lower, this whole thing. Especially on the green, like the rust is gonna look really red. So I'm toning it down a lot. 
And I'm not gonna put this over here because it's rather still rather vivid. I'm putting it just where I see it um, on the left side of the lion's face. It's going to be interesting to do this. Like, I don't know if I'm going to paint it or use fur to do it. an SCI interview this week with um, Lori. Um, she did some nice 2D that she had um, mounted on a... So it's floating in the frame. So it's framed, but this was attached to a board, but it wasn't all like wrapped around the board or tucked under the board. I think glass or no glass is really just a choice. Um, a piece can look very nicely finished when it's under glass, for sure. I've, once I got out of painting so much, I also got out of framing, um, kind of gladly because it's really, really expensive. Um, but, so searching for that good solution that we can afford and Cause like I could take this to the frame shop and pick out a beautiful frame for it and be very happy and spend seven hundred dollars. <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Two. Okay, good. Get. I think. I think what I'll do, cause I know I'm not going to, um, you know, get close to finishing anything, is. Um, pick a spot to develop so that you guys can see a part get, get a, more, a little more developed. I've got cinnamon and, oh wait, this is, I wasn't using bronze. I was using, this is Arabica. Mm This is cinnamon and bronze. So right now I'm just, I'm really breaking the fiber down um, so that it's not linear and I'm not trying to, you know, have like a, a color um, like lines going one way or the other. I'm just really trying to break it down so that it's fuzzy. This is why the, um, the skin tones and horse coats are so great.
be fun too in spots to pull some of the green out. Just got to make sure you're not pulling out the, um, oh wait, that's not what I want. This is what I want. I was like, why isn't that working? Um, make sure you don't pull out the foam. Gosh, this is so many color changes. So many teeny tiny color changes. Gail just said this is the reason to have all the colors. Yeah. Well, I did really want to try to limit my palette today. Um, but yes. All right, you guys feel free to speak up if like you see something that is like, oh my gosh, Sarah, please fix that. I do think the, um... Because I'm losing perspective a little bit. I think people aren't sure if what they're seeing is angle or... Right, right, right. Oh, right, good point. Actually, they want to see straight over your shoulder. But oh, we could, everything is a little tricky. I don't we know could move that a little bit. <laughs> Dre's like, no. <laughs> we could move it a little bit, yeah. No? A little more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to mess some stuff up. What's it going to mess up? Lighting. Let's, well, weigh, let's weigh this out. We're not going to be able to have a direct angle without you being in front of right. something. Like right. This. Right. I get it. And also the line's going to be covered. Did you use a tool to pull out some of the lines? I did. I was using the reverse needle. That yes. was a wet felted bit. It's, I agree. It's a little distracting. Brace for some movement. <laughs> Get ready. Oh, yeah. So the other Bolin girl. Totally crazy. Oh, did you watch a remake someone wanted to know or just the original? I watched. It was um, Scarlett Johansson and... Uh, what's her name? Um, Natalie Portman. Okay. I'm mixing um, cinnamon, melon, oh. and the, there I am. and the green. Oh, what's happening? We're shifting. Let me see. Let me see what's happening. <laughs> there's, there's my messy desk. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see it on camera. I'm mixing an eye color. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I gotta try and stay out of the way. I can't bomb anymore. <laughs> All right, I really fuzzed this out. Someone's saying the left ear is too high, but 
don't think you did this. Did you do the ear block? Oh, okay. The left ear, we want it. Yeah, they're right. We want it to be. I didn't really. I just put the dark in. But yeah, this dark, they're totally right. Should be like down here more. Good call. I brought mine patch. looks like it goes through the patch. So who am I to say? <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all. It's all important. Eyebrow patch. Well, I'm wondering if also adding the eye color is going to help that further eye. Like looking at it, his right eye is a little squintier. This right eye. I'm sorry. The right eye looking at it. So yes, his left eye. His left eye. It's, yes, it, it should be. Yes. It should be squintier than I have yes. it is what they're saying. Yes. Okay. Okie dokie. I hear you. <laughs> what should we call this process of painting by um, with all this input the word is escaping me I mixed melon, cinnamon, and the green. The green being the paisaggio. Oh, okay, that's right. So cool with the eyes. <laughs> just, you think I get cooler and cooler. Backseat painting. Backseat it's painting. Small. It's good. I like it. I'm going <laughs> to develop this concept. There's a YouTube channel called History Calling. She did a video comparing different movies against the facts, and the other Bowling Girl didn't do too well against yeah. the historic facts. Yes. Crazy times, man. You did you did gone. not want to be involved with court. No. With the king and the queen, because there didn't seem to be any Pink Oh. Like impartiality. Yeah, it was just like a whim, you know. Gallery painting. <laughs> painting by committee, painting by commenters. Pink by committee. That's kind of the word I was looking for, I think. So funny. Joint effort. Off with your head for sure, said Trisha. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, brutal. And... So, okay, so this is like fiction and it's like a movie and it's supposed to be. And it was just so tragic. <laughs> it was just so. I was like, where's my, where's my happy ending? But they, even the whole, the whole story was, it really wasn't about anything going well for anybody. <laughs> so I'm going to have to watch something. A little. I like this. We can't see you working now. A little lighter. Oh, my head is blocked. Oh, well, that's the thing. It's like, I can move over. I can move over. Yeah. We could also move the thing to the right a little bit. Okay. We'll do a little combo. I'm so stuck in my seat right now. I feel like a... I'm going to move over a little bit. I'm going to move this over a little bit. How's that? 
I mean, I ha I kind of have to get in front of the painting a little bit. Yeah. Let me just angle it this way a tiny bit. <gasps> there goes the microphone. How's that? Give it a minute. Good. Hey, you guys, we're making really good progress. The crazy thing is, I mean, it's starting to look... Okay, so this is a kind of a testament to working broad strokes. Is It's like looking you know, starting to look like something, but there's still so much work to do. <laughs> so really starting to, you know, create rounded, these rounded shapes and, you know, all of that is, um, is a lot of work. Let me get back to my reference image here and see if I can. Okay. I'm trying to decide which area I want to we're very interested in the main. I think I see also the main. Oh, I know. I'm totally going to ignore the main <laughs> for a while. I'd like to see how you guys do the main, too. <laughs> You're supposed to stretch and dance. Just yeah. FYI. Yeah. Well, okay. I think I'll work on... Let's just work on this to start to see an area develop and then I'll see if I can get some main stuff going um, and we'll see where we are. All right, so this, I moved that down. This came all the way over into here. Part two tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I know, we're gonna need it. All right, so this really, I'm going to see if I can pull this off. I'm not sure if I can. Okay. Uh-oh, here comes that sneeze. Nope, nope. <coughs> yep. Bless you. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. What's that? Oh, I know. All right, help me get into mixing like little bits of color. I'll try to talk about what I'm doing. Everyone's blessing you. Thank you. <laughs> my, my sneeze, that was 10, 10 <laughs> 15 seconds, seconds ago. All right, when I sit like this, am I in? Am I in the way? No. no yeah. I think you're fine. Okay. So right now, I'm gonna start to try to bring this area into a little bit more um, definition and completion so you guys can see that. And then we'll see what, we'll play with the main a little bit, see what happens with that. Yeah, I just want, I wanted to try it. Um, will you pass me the paper towel that's under that? Do you want an actual tissue? That's all right. <laughs> oh no, I when I do this, I mix like so many little bits of color. Um, What was the last question? Oh, about wet felting it. First. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I just wanted to try. I just wanted to try. Um, see how what it did.
it wouldn't be a bad idea to mix yourself several paint puddles that you want to work with. Um, around the whole lion, like. It's hard for me not to jump around. <laughs> I'm trying to work on one on one spot. I don't want to. That is how you paint though. You get a color and Yeah. It's such um, such small amounts of wool and so many little decisions. Do we want to zoom onto the spot that I'm working or? How much more would you? Let me see. Let me look at it. Yeah, I think it might be good because it would lighten up so that they could really see. Because like right now, I think my shirt is so light. Yeah. So like if we kind of tighten up on this a little bit, um, we could re unzoom when I do the um, when I do the main. Yeah, and then is it? Do you think it's dark or is it just my screen? It's a little dark. It is dark, yeah. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Some people are like, no zoom. Oh, no zoom. Okay, well, yeah. I think it might. So what I'm going for here is mm, 
light yellow at the bottom of the eye, the top area of the iris being more in shadow. And then I can really You can cut your fiber if you need to, like to make it smaller. Um, I prefer not to because then I feel like I'm battling uh, cut edges. bent broken needle isn't working for me <laughs> any questions or anything it's very quiet busted <laughs> that needle is so busted I'm gonna mix a light this is kind of what we're missing is this super light blonde that's in here so I'm using um, amber and gen gen tan and a little bit of flamingo. So we can start to get the light that is around the eye here and I feel like that's gonna help everybody see. The shape better. So I'm really kind of busting it up. And just like in uh, 3D, you know, fringe is your friend, but it can help you blend colors together. What's that? Oh, <laughs> well, like I said, <laughs> let's see how the main turns out. I should, I could, like, I do also have all the um, other 2D ones that we did, you know, that I did the hound and the zebra. And... such a fun medium. It really, really reminds me of pastels. Um, definitely a lot of squinting. Helps you see what the where the values change and what they're doing and
not as messy as pastels. Nope. Not as tough to frame. A fundraising live auction for finished work could go to Heifer. Next year. Yeah. People have a lot of ideas flowing on here. Yeah. That'll be fun. Something's bugging me. It's this, I guess. This is an interesting area because um, it's kind of gray. It's not really, so I'm gonna mix green and bronze and um, a little bit of purple, current, I think. I'm gonna lighten it up with a little bit of Gen Gen Tan. I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it all there. Um, it should kind of like, because it's helping make some of the shadow colors, um, like it should feel like it's kind of throughout the whole thing in a way. going to keep this quite quite gray <laughs> easels moving around And then when I put this color in, it'll be warmer and it'll make this look more gray. Everything's relative to each other. All right, we should move on um, to the main a little bit.
Look how I said we. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So someone commented that there, there's kind of a splotchy, like it has that feel because of the change of colors and you go over and blend things. Yeah, yeah. But like in, that's. In certain areas are kind of splotchy. Like if you look at that lion. Yeah, it's very splotchy. It's splotchy. Like <laughs> but overall, when it's done, it doesn't look that way. Yeah. Are you doing that right on the left side? Um, probably mainly over here. Mainly. <laughs> probably going to have to get kind of a skewed angle again. I can turn this this way a little bit. How's that? Begun for a part two. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I could put off working on it for a while. That would be a bummer. I kind of want to see it. See it come to be. Oh, I really like this color. It's the current and bronze mixed together. Current and bronze. Yeah, so it's like a really nice grayish color. All right, main. So I have these furs. I chose, chose it, um, panther, bison, uh, camel, and platinum. So I want to work dark to light. Like you want to, well, you want to shingle from the bottom up. If, if that's the approach you're going to take. Um, so I can take some panther. And then I would use a color with it to hold it that is similar to the color. So a little bit of black. <coughs> Excuse me. I have something in my throat. <coughs> I'm sorry. So what's neat about using fur or something that is like the actual texture, like if you were doing a Highland cow and <coughs> use Surrey, for example, it does a lot of the work for you. Like the fur has a shine and has a texture. So it's going to look very realistic. You know, when you use paint, you don't have this option. You have to paint the shine and you have to paint the texture. Does that make sense? <laughs> I can work for a while. That's fine. I can work for a little while longer. So using a textured fiber that does this work for you is smart. <laughs> And fun. That's why we like the medium. That's why we're using this medium. Now, if I really want this to, like, I'm not stabbing quite as much as I would um, if I were just here working alone. Oh wait, what did I do? I have bison and... Uh, oh, mink. Yeah. I have mink and bison. I'm gonna switch to mink now. I Get on. a wolf in there too. Oh yeah, the grays at the top. Mm -hmm. That's why you need one of each fur. 
<laughs> so in each shingle, I'm putting a little bit of wool. purple and my green underneath here so I'm not I'm I'm gonna have the lion in vignette like I'm not gonna come all the way down I'm gonna leave some green around I was down there getting the furs and I was like wow we did we did good with this one they're really really fun the way I roll. I try it anyway. So you can see the light hitting this already has dimension and sh you know shine and shadows and This is going to be a fun step. Now, this is where it gets a little like, as I bring the fur and the lion together you know how are you tr making that transition because now some static going on I'm gonna I think what I'll do is mix some fibers together so I've got camel bison and bronze not the easiest thing to mix could use my hand carters but <laughs> Would you use this fur for pet portraits? It's um the fur is very long and very shiny. So it is a choice. Like are you doing a golden retriever and you really want to just you know like this lion's mane, I'm really going for it with the fur. Um or do you want to use a more direct approach? Like I could do this lion's mane with all of the colors that I'm using and it would be more like it was painted um, than these actual sort of textured pieces. How much fur do you expect to use on this whole piece? Hmm, that's a good question. I took about took about 24 inch pieces so we'll see where we are An ounce is like at least a 36 yeah piece, yeah
I'm not really happy with this color that I just put down here. Um, I'm going to go with it for now. Have you tried using combs rather than hand carters for blending since it's such a long staple with the fur? I haven't. I haven't you do tried. a good bit just by hand with the fur. So the problem with putting, I don't like that. I'm taking it off. The problem with putting fur here is that it's gonna actually stick out farther than the face mm -hmm. and that's confusing. Um, it's when confusing. It <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll use, I'll use fiber there. No, I think I'll use I'll use fiber over there because like I said it's going to it's going to be too distracting. Mm -hmm. Um We do have a nice little bit of reflected light that I want to get. On this chin here. Well, this is a good angle you guys have right now. It's good. It's possible that if we, um, if I decide to work on this, you know, in the meantime or whatever, we could, I could film myself working. Yeah. I did get out some Surrey locks, but I think this is going to be easier to work with. And I can kind of tame and stab the fur a little bit more into um, specific, you know, more, <laughs> more designed um, look. I'm gonna do one more with camel and then I'm gonna to switch to platinum. I don't want it like too, too thick. Mm -hmm. I kind of want like the look of some, oh, I feel like a hairstylist. <laughs> Let's check our, not too bad. How stuck you are. Mm -hmm. Not too stuck. camel and platinum in a few places. Yeah, right now my face is a little 
<clears throat> and I still have a lot of green coming through. Like I have a lot of work to do in there. So it is, it is a little bit, uh, it will become a little more um, homogenized in, in color and You're definitely going to have to film yourself. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was like, why does that feel weird? Sue Bingham said, please film. They feel like, she feels like we're getting to know him so well. <laughs> okay. All right. We can do that. What did we do with the hounds that day? Did I just go live or? Okay. So that's. This is camel and platinum. Oh, platinum. I just felt like I needed a few. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to actually go to platinum, but I needed a little bit of a transition. I mean, really, like, what? <laughs> They're so amazing, lions. They're just... So in the image, you know, there's some, like, dark... So that's where I'm kind of creating that with. I mean, it doesn't have to look exactly like the image, but. So what I'm talking about is when, like, when I put this piece on, in between this big poof next to the face, and then in that corner of the ear, mm -hmm. there's some darks in here, and so it's like, okay, how is that? How are you creating that? But let me put on the big poof first. I might need more than one big poof. And then I have to figure out how to handle the transition from the face to the fur. Let me go up a little bit. What?
What? Trisha Scott said she'd be lying if she said she doesn't adore this painting. <laughs> I love his like bed head up here. We have to figure out how to. This lion. I love the look of this lion. I gotta. I really want to hope that I capture it, the way that I see it. I think I've gone maybe a little wide with all this. We'll see what happens. That's the name of the game today. Yeah, I probably could use a little bit of wolf, but... Alright, so to get some of these transitions... Do you want me to grab you a tiny bit of wolf? What's that? Do you want me to grab you a tiny bit of wolf? No, I'm alright. Ooh, now they're looking to name him. Ooh, yeah, that's fun. Give him a good, give him a good Italian name. Someone said Fabio. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try. A few shingles. tricky to make that change from fur to flat from again. fur to flat yeah mm, maybe some ash or nut this is nut sorry Leo Zeno. getting there. Needs a little, little hair product.
any questions or anything? Um, I've been answering some of them. People are asking about the fur. Emma tried to call the lion and got eaten. What? <laughs> oh, call him king. Emma typed something really funny and I wasn't sure what happened. Oh. There was a crunch crunch and a burp and she said she got eaten. Oh. <laughs> What do we think about the fur? Like, how does it look on camera? I think it's coming through pretty well. Yeah, we, have, we got some positive comments on it. Are you going to be adding an area for that a little bit? Um, mm, I think I'm ready to, like, wind down or like I might jump around. Why? Uh, What's up? Oh, it was under your head a little bit, but if you Oh, okay. Do you want me to just pull out in general? Oh, uh, yeah, you could back it up a little bit. I don't really have a pink, but I'm looking at the inside of the ear and so I'm using rust, currant, and cinnamon to try to make like a little inside of the ear. dark pink color. Yeah, I think I think the fur works well. I think it can save you a lot of time. Um, I think there's a lot of potential to make it really dynamic. I'm going to, I'm trying to sort of skirt between, um, you know, dynamic and the, and the, and the 2D process, like. Trying to be a little bit of, little bit of both here. But now my challenge is going to be to make all of this pop um, more <laughs> because this is so much, so much pop. This is dark enough, this. If you live, so if you limit your palette, then you're kind of forced to make the colors and then they'll all work together. So I could have gone and grabbed you know, another pink or something. But then it's like, if that's nowhere else in the painting, um, it can be hard to pull the whole painting together, even though it might be realistic to have it a slightly different color.
So I could cut some fur or I could try just amber. Although I think amber is going to be too boring compared to everything else we have going on here. play with that a little bit more so yeah I see lots of places where I need to work on corners turning and color change I'm gonna stand up and step back for a second doesn't help if I don't have my glasses. Oh, they're on top of my head. Why don't you guys tell me my glasses are on top of my head? I like it. I think it has a lot of potential. I like the fur. Um, I can see how I need to, <laughs> you know, balancing that out on the other side. Although I don't think I'm gonna use fur over there. I think I'm gonna keep it to wool. And then taking what I did with the fur and further um, kind of defining it and maybe working some shadows in and even flattening it out a little bit so that when I refine the face, um, it stands out enough relative to the fur. That's my plan. Covered in fiber. I'm not going to turn and face you because you won't be able to hear me. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Um, I will. Um, I'll keep working, and we'll figure out how to. Um, we can just film. You know, we can just leave the setup. Maybe. Yeah. What do we have next? Oh, we want to film. Okay, we'll figure it out. Um, any idea how much longer you think it'll take you to finish him? Someone's wondering. I think it'll take me another two to three hours. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I can, I can get the darks and lights and things in place relatively quickly. It's kind of like wrapping an armature and making some shapes that to me is the fast part. The slow part is all of the all of the details. And it does depend on how detailed I want it to be. Um, but I, I, it's fun to see it come into c clearer and clearer focus. So um, I'm liking I'm liking the way this is working now that I'm seeing it on camera. This looks like it needs to get a little bit wider to me. And that might just be bringing this, this lightness over more. It's more this side, I think, than this side, but I'll, I'll, I'll work on it. <laughs> All right, thank you all so much, and we'll film the rest. Um, don't know how much talking I'll do maybe yeah. <laughs> when I film, you know, when I work on it again, but um, we could put some music or something, or you could listen to your own music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think we're good. Thank you.